It's now hours until the world marks the moment when uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced he was launching a special military operation uh, in Ukraine. Soon after that speech, in the early hours of the morning, 12 months ago, the land, sea and air invasion began. Since then, the war has uh, killed thousands, displaced millions and destroyed entire cities. Today, Boris Johnson, who led the international effort to support Ukraine, told Sky News that British security was at risk if Kyiv loses. Speaking exclusively, he said the UK should break the ice and provide typhoon fighter jets soon. He also described Vladimir Putin as a gangster and an adventurer, and he warned Beijing not to support Moscow. The, the astonishing thing about where we are today is uh, nobody thought that uh, the Ukrainians were going to hold out for a, a week, if you remember, let alone a year, or very few people thought they would resist in the heroic way that they have. And it's absolutely crucial that uh, we give them the supplies and support they need to, to get on and finish it. This 2023 has got to be the year of victory for Ukraine. That's the best thing for Ukraine. By the way, it's the best thing for the, the Russian people. It's the best thing for the world. It's the humane thing, and let's get on with it. If they don't get those resources and that equipment, and you've talked about everything they need, fighter jets and so forth, if they don't get all that, what could happen in your view? I think that the we, we've perpetually underestimated the Ukrainians and overestimated what Putin can do. But there is clearly a possibility, unless the Ukrainians get the help that they need, that Putin can kind of manufacture out of the land that he's able to retain some sort of victory from this disaster. And he'll be able to, to hunker back down and uh, keep in the, the land that he's uh, that he's acquired, and then bide his time and wait till he can attack again. That's why it's so vital that we help the Ukrainians to expunge Putin's forces from every part of their territory, and, and not just from the territory that he's occupied since February the 24th last year, but I think increasingly uh, it, he's gonna, that he's going to have to get out of the whole of 1991 Ukraine. They can do it. Do not underestimate what the Ukrainians can do. They, they kicked him out of uh, the, the Kiev area where you are now. They kicked him out of the Kharkiv area. They kicked him out of Kherson. Uh, if they have the right kit, so if they have the deep fires, the long-range artillery, if they have enough tanks, we need to give them more tanks. And yes, if they have planes to take out those, those Russian artillery positions, their Russian command and control as well, then I've got no doubt that President Zelensky's armed forces can recapture their territory. They're fighting for their country and they're determined to win. Right. What are the consequences, though, of failure, in your view? I think the consequences of any kind of Putin victory, any kind of... Uh, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, he's able to continue to uh, threaten not just Ukraine, but Georgia, Moldova, the Baltic states, Poland, anywhere on the vast periphery of the former Soviet empire. Don't forget, this is what this is all about. He was never really threatened by Ukraine as a potential NATO member. There was no question of establishing uh, NATO missiles on Ukrainian soil, any of that nonsense. This has purely been done by Putin to bolster his flagging position at home and to try to reconstitute uh, the old Soviet empire. So he, 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 he will retain that ability. Plus, I think it will be a terrible signal if he has any kind of success. It will be a terrible signal for the world, for everywhere where we care deeply about borders that uh, should not be changed by force. And clearly the, the read across in, the, uh, in, in Southeast Asia, uh, in, uh, in, in the South China Seas, that's very clear. Now, uh, some top US generals are saying they're reviewing their own stockpile of weapons because they're getting so low. Sky's own reporting today suggests that the UK weapons and ammunition stores are getting low, so low that it risks not being able to support Ukraine and keep Britain safe. My question is, should the UK put its defence industry on a war footing? I think it's very important that we uh, continue to make the munitions that we need uh, for our, our own country and for the Ukrainians as well. And 
uh, you know, the, the, the stuff that we've been able to equip them with from, uh, from Belfast, from Talos in Belfast, that's been absolutely crucial. Uh, what we, you know, we have stocks. We have the, when it comes, for instance, to uh, the tanks and, and the planes, we have them. The question, are they battle-worthy? Are they, are they ready? Uh, can people be trained up yeah. to use them? I think that in sorry many cases, the I'm answer sorry to that to is yes. And I, and I just make a, a well, crucial point well, about our own well, sorry defense. To but it's sorry. quite clear we don't have, we don't have the stores and the stocks. If, uh, you know, you listen to this, what Sky is reporting today, people are very worried about that. Should we be yeah. putting uh, the UK defence industry me, on a war me... footing? I, as, as I said, I certainly think we need to be making sure that we equip ourselves with what we need. But if you look at the, the UK's own defences and how to make sure that our own country is protected and the entire Euro-Atlantic uh, se security area is protected, then the best thing you can do, the most economical thing you can do, is to make sure that Putin fails in Ukraine and that the Ukrainians win. Yeah. And that is an investment yeah. uh, that we can make in our long-term security that I think will be very, very financially effective and economical. Yeah, but that requires a very big investment. Vladimir Putin is clearly reorganising his economy, reorganising his defence industry and preparing for a very long war. As I say, you know, should the UK and other NATO countries be on a war footing? Because who knows where this war is going to lead? I don't know what you exactly mean by a war footing, Mark. What I'm saying is that we should continue to supply the munitions that we can. We should continue to make uh, more munitions. And we should recognise, when you talk about the expense, well, we well, should recognise that what we're, what we're to, doing... To gear up for a long war. What we're doing now is actually making war. sure that we are able to save money, save defence expenditure in the long term. Because, as, as we just discussed, the risk of any kind of success by Vladimir Putin is that our general security would be much more gravely imperiled. That's why it's essential to do what we're doing now. At the very least, then, then does the UK need to significantly increase defence spending beyond what you had planned when you were in office? Well, if you look at the defence budget since, uh, since I came in in, in 2019, actually, the, it went up already from... I think slightly under 2% to about 2.4%, and just organically yep. as a result of the, the commitments that the UK is making under uh, the future combat aircraft system or... or yes, or yes but with many respect, other I mean, Ukraine well, hadn't We're going happened. up to about 3% Ukraine anyway, hadn't so we happened are then. spending more on defence. And that's but quite Ukraine right hadn't too. happened we, then. We I mean, if, if, if Rishi Sunak doesn't significantly increase defence spending in the next budget, would he be failing as a wartime leader? Well, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple of sort of ifs there, uh, Mark. And I, th I think that uh, I, I pay tribute to the, the government, the Prime Minister, Defence Secretary, what they're continuing to, to do. And the UK remains way out uh, in, in front. It's one of the, the big donors uh, to Ukraine, not just of... Uh, of humanitarian assistance, but of that crucial military assistance. And what I'm saying now is that when it comes to things like fighter jets, of course, you know, what, the, what the Ukrainians want is uh, F-16s. Uh, as it happens, uh, we don't have F-16s, we do have typhoons. I think there's an argument for the UK breaking the ice uh, and, and giving them some typhoons. If it's a question of, of uh, training people up to use those machines, then we can do that. Right. Um, just a couple more. What would the consequences be, do you think, if China um, actively supported Russia in this war by supplying weaponry? I think it would be a historic mistake by the, by the Chinese. I was very concerned to see what Wang Yi was, uh, was doing yesterday uh, in, in Moscow. I, I think, you know, it would be a big mistake. Why does China want to be contaminated by association with with Putin, who's revealed himself to be this gangster and, and adventurer. I think it would be a big mistake by, by China, but what it, what it shows is the, the urgency of us giving the Ukrainians what they need to succeed this year and to make sure that 2023 is the year of victory. And what about Putin? Is the desired outcome 
regime change in Moscow? No, I think I think it's very important, Mark, that we we don't we you know, we've got to stop talking about Putin. He loves us talking about uh, himself and about what's going to happen in the Kremlin and about his uh, nuclear weapons and all that. We should focus on uh, our Ukrainian friends and on what we can do to help them to defeat this appalling invasion of their territory. And so far, they have overcome the odds. Uh, time and again, they've proved that uh, they can do it and they will do it. This is basically a war for independence now. Mark, wars for independence only end one way. And with the US, the UK, all our friends uh, now are very, very strongly in support of, of Ukraine. I think they can and they will win. But what I'm saying is, let's not delay. If we're going to give them the kit they need sooner or later, if that's the choice, sooner or later, let's give it sooner. A um, quick one on the Northern Ireland Protocol. You've always said that you would always support your successor. Will you support any deal that he does on Brexit and Northern Ireland? Yeah, look, I, th I think that um, it's important that we wait to see what, what there may be, but I think the, the best way forward, as I, as I've, as I, I said when I was uh, running the government, is, is the Northern Ireland bill, which you know, cleared the Commons uh, very comfortably, I think unamended, um, when I was uh, when I was in office, and and uh, only a few months ago, so I think that's the the best way forward. So you can't guarantee to back any deal that he comes up with. Well, you know, I think the best thing is to continue with the uh, the Northern Ireland bill that uh, that we that we agreed, and that's a, it's a it's a very good bill. It fixes all the the problems. It it, it solves the uh, the problems that we have in the in the uh, uh, northern nor, nor, the Irish Sea. It solves the problems. Uh, of, of paperwork, uh, VAT and so on. It's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent bill and uh, doesn't set up any other problems uh, in the economy of the, of, uh, uh, of, of the whole island of Ireland. So it's, I'd go with that one. But it, well, it hasn't turned out to be an excellent bill for many people, has it? Well, I, I, it has. It, it's, it went unamended through the Commons. I mean, it, it's, it's there. OK. Um, look, just one I should put to you, to be fair. Keir Starmer says you and he loathed each other. He disliked you because you had no principles. What, what do you say to that? Well, actually, I, I, I think that it's very important that politicians uh, get on with each other as far as they possibly can. I, I had a perfectly good relationship with him. And um, I think that, you know, um, it's important to be as, as civil and as friendly as you, as you possibly can. OK, and lastly on Ukraine, the Ukrainian Prime Minister said today to Sky News that if Ukraine loses the war, if Putin wins, it could well lead to a third world war. Uh, do you agree? Well, I think the stakes are very high. I think that in the sense, as we discussed earlier, I just think there's a, there is a real risk that if Putin can manufacture any kind of success out of this, then um, he will be able to continue to threaten not just Ukraine, uh, the rest of Ukraine, but all the parts of the former Soviet uh, empire that he wants to in intimidate. And everybody else around the world will draw the conclusion, Mark, that, that aggression pays off and that borders can be changed by force. This is an absolutely critical moment for the world. This is a, this is a pivot moment. This is a hinge of fate. This is the decisive moment in the early 21st century. If Ukraine wins, and I think Ukraine will win, and I know Ukraine uh, can win uh, with, with our help, then that will be absolutely critical for our security for decades to come. If, on the other hand, as you say, uh, Putin is able to manufacture some kind of victory, I think that will be a, a blow uh, for peace, stability, and for prosperity.